You're listening to the Quality Speak Weekly Podcast. 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 Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the PolitiSpeak Weekly Podcast here on wherever you're listening to us on, actually, whether that's over on YouTube, on iTunes, over on our Facebook page, uh, or wherever that may be. I want to thank you again for joining us. This is episode 14, A Comedy of Errors, for 3-16-2017. Got a lot to talk about this week. Uh, we had some show notes prepped on Tuesday this week. We wanted to get an early start. And then Thursday rolls around, and, uh, well, shit kind of hits the fan in the most delightful or uh, frightening of ways. So we have another other things to talk to, but I think the first thing we do want to jump into is kind of been making the rounds earlier this week, and that is Donald Trump's tax returns. Well, part of Donald Trump's tax returns. What we know now is that... Uh, two pages of his 2005 tax returns have been made public. Now, these two pages don't show us what we actually wanted to know. It doesn't show us all the money coming in and, and where it's coming from, all that stuff. But it is kind of important, and it's kind of a big deal that we get it. They were made public on Tuesday night of this week, uh, revealing that the president pulled in about $150 million in 2005, and he paid $38 million in taxes. Now, we don't know who released these tax returns, but they were um, allegedly they were dumped in the mailbox of an investigative journalist, David K. Johnson. Uh, Johnston is over over at uh, MSNBC. And Rachel Maddow picked up this story and kind of highlighted on Twitter, kind of making this huge expose, tune in tonight, big reveal, yada, yada, yada got the internet uh, buzzing. In fact, when the show went live and I was actually watching it because I was sitting here doing some work, I went over to her blog and to David K. Johnston's website and everything was down. All around, you couldn't get in onto it, into it. MSC was, MSNBC's their own website was having issues. So clearly people were interested in seeing this regardless of what the administration would say. Now, the document is out there. But this release raises some questions about the president's own argument uh, that he can't release his tax returns. The White House came out actually before, slightly before the program at live because MSNBC went to the White House for verification saying, are these legit? Are these his actual tax returns? Yada, yada. And, of course, the White House confirmed that these were and tried to get ahead of MSNBC by releasing their own statement. Now, to me, that's the most interesting part of this release and situation, not the tax returns themselves, because to be fair, and I don't know what Nate thinks about this just yet, but I am not the biggest fan of Rachel Maddow over at MSNBC, and I do feel like this turned into more of a circus uh, situation for about the hour or two leading up to this huge reveal, like it was going to be some uh, smoking gun situation, when it, in fact it turned out in reality to not be that impressive of a reveal. I, I think... It's impressive in the fact that we got part of his tax return, and that means that it is out there somewhere. Uh, my speculation is the person that released this must have more because you usually don't just get these random two pages. Uh, it is a client copy. So there is someone with close ties to the president himself that odds are has more of these documents, so we'll see if more of these start filtering out. But I think the interesting story, at least to me, is that the White House confirms this and the White House uh, kind of verifying all this, which kind of negates the president's own argument about why he couldn't release his tax return. Now, if you remember, early on in the campaign, he touted several times that uh, when when I win and when we, we're all done with this, I'll gladly release my tax returns. I'll be happy to do it. Uh, I promise you guys I'll do it. And then as he gets closer and closer to Election Day and after the winning, we get into the conversation of, well, I'm under audit. I can't really do this. I'm not allowed to release it. Now, the interesting there is we don't actually know if the president's under audit or not. The IRS won't say anything, of course. And the president, of course, hasn't provided any confirmation of that. Usually when you get an audit, uh, my father is a tax preparer for 50-plus years now, uh, who has been audited uh, several times. You get a letter from the IRS stating you're under audit. This is the situation that's going to happen, on and on and on. That document 
uh, can be made available to everyone. That document has not been made available, so we actually don't know if he's being audited or not. But let's just say, let's roll with him this time and say that he is, in fact, being audited. By them making this statement ahead of this MSNBC report and confirming these two pages and, you know, verifying them and the rest of them and saying it's real and, and they confirm it and they, you know, counter the, the release, kind of invalidates his own reasons for saying they can't talk about the tax returns because if they release this information themselves, they're clearly violating that policy or whatever they say that you can't release your information while under audit, which of course isn't true. You actually can. So I think that's the interesting story. But the returns themselves at two pages basically only only show that he earned around, you know, just a little over $150 million in 2005. And he paid a very small percentage of that in uh, regular federal income taxes. Now, he paid about 24%, I want to say. It's it's pretty pretty low. I do know families make far less than Donald Trump uh, that are paying a higher tax bracket than that. And he did come out later and say he wants to revise the tax code to help and, and to abolish a bunch of stuff. Of course, stuff that would directly impact him and make his taxes less. So I think a lot of this was, was, was kind of a red herring in the situation. I would have liked it if there was actually the tax returns. But I don't know. I, I think it comes down to this may be, in fact, being the first kind of trickle of information because something like tax returns are a very interesting kind of thing. You know, you can't just have access to them, and especially a political person and especially a business person of this caliber. Uh, these tax returns are kept under lock and key. The IRS is very different than other organizations like the CIA, like the FBI. When, when you talk about hacks and you talk about releases, uh, the IRS almost is never affected by these things because they're very controlling. I know for a fact that the president's files and, and all these things are kept in a vault, basically, at the IRS. So odds are it's not going to be uh, some rogue agent within the IRS. Odds are it's going to be someone close to Trump, the closest people to him that would be able to get a hold of these tax returns. There could be a lot of other reasons why someone else would get them, but Odds are the only person that has access to my tax returns would be me and then probably the next closest people in my family or the people that I live with that would have easier access or my tax repair themselves. So for them to come out like this is very interesting. I am more concerned with who released them and if they have more. And that's kind of where I see. What do you what do you see on this situation, Nate, coming from there? It definitely feels like we could be on the cusp of something big, right? I mean, that's. I, I feel like I feel like there's there has to be a lot more. I don't think someone would release these two pieces of document because one, it is utterly illegal what they did to release someone else's tax return. That is a fact that I agree with. It is not, of course, illegal for MSNBC or journalists to publish it. That's their protection under the First Amendment, as long as they themselves did not solicit the information. But someone to go out of their way that much to release two pages that don't really show much, and they must have known it doesn't show much, has to be either a ridiculously dumb move on their part, because you know the government and you know Donald Trump is going to go after him as hard as he can, um, and not have a lot more. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say to, to the to the earlier part about Rachel Maddow, I'm actually kind of with you on on her and, and on on that on about her show, but I, I kind of have a I kind of have a mixed reaction to her because because on the one hand she is this really really intelligent woman if she's the first openly gay Rhodes Scholar, I mean she's obviously I mean this very you know intelligent credentialed person and qualified person and all that but yeah i do find her show which i think when i was younger i was a little bit more into it it does kind of it, it's a little i think it's the style of show i like maddow and and her credentials back her up and i have cited her several times on pieces and i have shared stuff that like she makes good points of but i think her show in general is kind of more this geared towards entertainment more so than i feel an afternoon or even any sort of news show should be. Well, she certainly wasn't being accused of that on <laughs> on Tuesday night. I mean, she was being accused of having the opposite of entertainment value. I mean, yeah, I, again, I, my my reaction to her is that, uh, yeah, I mean, she's, she's super likable. She's super cool. She, she runs a good show. But th there's something about her particular style of sort of on-air liberal journalism that just doesn't tick me off, but it, it doesn't 
exactly sit right with me. And I remember, I remember years ago when Melissa Harris Perry uh, filled in for Rachel Maddow for a while. I remember that she kind of had, and I'm not saying that she was taking cues from Maddow or she was trying to be like Maddow, but I, there was just something almost about that time slot where it's like, there's like this very kind of almost a little kind of self-impressed kind of verbosity to it uh, that I find just a little kind of kind of draining. But you know, that's MSNBC, and they, you know, they've they've had people as great as Joy and Reed and Chris Hayes, and then they've also had a complete idiot like Ed Schultz on there. So, and then they also have like a windbag like Chris Matthews. So they're kind of all over the place. But yeah, well, I, I can't I can't even watch Chris Matthews. <laughs> no, Chris Matthews is is just become insufferable and is is all you know, he can be making the greatest points in the world, but I have to change the channel because he's so insufferable no he is and he constantly i mean he's just infamous for this i mean besides his he said some very i mean like all these people have uh, the, the best of them the worst of them they they all say and this is true of both sides i mean uh, you know fox news and talk radio conservatives just like msnbc liberals and bloggers you know they can they'll get ahead of themselves and they'll make these points that they think are clearly like these very provocative insights or takes and they wind up being like just wildly misquoted and and, and they they kind of like force everyone else within the the movement and the line to answer for you know what I mean. And and Chris Matthews, I feel like has has had some pretty dumb ones like that. And he's just yeah, he just chronically interrupts people. I mean, I remember years ago when he was on Larry Elder's uh, talk radio show, and he was trying to get a word in, and Larry Elder kept cutting him off. And you know they're talking about his JFK biography, and finally Chris Matthews protested, and and Larry Elder said. Well, yeah, I'm treating you just like you treat people on your show, basically. <laughs> like, I'm interrupting you all the time, which was actually like, I, I would seldom root for Larry Elder in any context, but that was one of the rare times where I was like, yeah, that's that's actually how it is. So, they, they, yeah, the whole, you know, MSNBC runs runs the whole gamut. And, and Rachel Maddow is obviously very, very popular. She is very good at what she does, but I'm I'm not like a natural viewer or someone who tunes in. But yeah, it's, it's interesting. This Tuesday, she was accused of the opposite of entertainment value. And I, I didn't even hear anything about this going to be happening until no i mean i was watching the news and i was keeping up on twitter and then literally all of a sudden she posts this uh this tweet saying we got these returns we're going or we're going big tonight with something and then as the the afternoon wore on it was about these tax returns and everybody was like losing their minds about it i remember being stopping everything to turn on the tv to see just what was going on and it you know the case had to have been that these documents showed up at the last second and you had to put a show together before something you know before you lose them or whatever but i mean the fact that the white house confirmed them uh, was crazy no it is but but everything about this is crazy and like i said i didn't hear about this till like right as it happened and then it became like everyone's watching it and you know like the twitter feed suddenly looked like you know oscar night or the super bowl or something like everyone's eyes were on it and it was interesting too how much of uh i mean there, there was a really divisive sort of effect that it had on people where there were a lot of people i saw who were you know this, this is all presumably on like you know the left side of of things I, I don't think conservatives had anything nice to say about the show but like there were you know, there were liberals and others who were saying you know news doesn't happen overnight you know when when woodward and bernstein were revealing everything about the watergate scandal and crime i mean that that was not something that just happened instantaneously that was a story that was worked on for a, for a while and you know it slowly leaked out and was revealed and it was, there, there was kind of i think that rationale for how maddow conducted it last night that you know she's really building this case and you know maybe she didn't have a lot right now but we could be on the cusp of something uh and then there were other people i mean like alan clifton over at forward progressives uh was accusing her of being uh, guilty of the kind of clickbait that she's derided among others uh so that i and i saw a pretty critical piece i think on slate about this too that there, she just maybe she just didn't have a lot and she needed to be the first person to get out there with it but it certainly seemed like a lot of people weren't a lot of people were glued to their tvs till it happened i think <laughs> and well, it worked. I mean, it worked because people were all over. They brought down her website. They brought down uh, David K. Johnson's website mid thing. But yeah, when I watched her her show straight through, because this was wall to wall coverage on this, about ten fifteen minutes in, after you know the talk of of what is actually in here, you could tell that they didn't have a ton, and it was starting to wear thin because with these two pages, you you really don't have a lot. 
it is important that these came out, but the importance of these documents are self-inflicted by the administration themselves. There's no reason we should have been having this conversation. There's no reason that it should have gotten this big as it is if these tax returns had just come out naturally and were put out there. So the fact that people are really interested in this one way or the other shows that the administration is wrong about people not actually caring about these returns. People, are, it seems, are very interested. Now, you know, Maddow's vindication on this will come if more information and more documents are released because I highly doubt someone is going to go out of their way to put their life and career in jeopardy over two documents that don't show us what we really want to know. Exactly. And that brings us to what some people think might have even happened that Donald Trump or someone around him had leaked this to... Edwin, David K. Johnson said the same thing when he was being interviewed talking about it because they just showed up in his box and he wrote uh, the book about Donald Trump years ago that Donald Trump likes to release his own information in his own press for whatever reason. A lot of the times it's to divert or a lot of times it's to make himself look good or whatever the case may be. And he was clear about we don't know where these com- these came from because tax returns are very private things that don't just float around in offices. It very well could have come from him himself. It's it's equally plausible, of of course, if not more, maybe that he didn't do that, that didn't do this, that this wasn't strategy. But certainly the way that Donald Trump handled this via social media afterwards kind of would lend credence to the idea that they did put this out there and then they did want to be able to turn around after it came out and said, hey, look at that. See, it turns out to really not be that much of of an issue, which of course isn't. And as David K. Johnson has elaborated on, even if he is obeying the tax law, I mean, it's just like going back to the the story about all his casino losses in 95 that the New York Times broke last autumn. It's kind of the same thing. Like David K. Johnson talking about that uh, depreciation boon in the 1986 uh, tax uh, um, changes that where they can claim, even if it's apparently, even if it's over a dollar of, of loss or something, they, they can claim that and wealthy, you know, real estate owners can basically wipe out their entire income tax obligation to the federal government. It's, it's, it's just this amazing, seemingly, I mean, it's like the hedge fund, the carried interest loophole that hedge fund man, head hedge fund managers can claim. It just, it doesn't seem to adhere to any sort of national interest or economic logic per se. There's no real rationale I can think of that defends this reasonably, but it's there and it's in the tax code. And so Donald Trump can say, just like he was able to say during the debates about about how he was able to claim all this negative income for years because of his casino losses. You know, I, I played by the rules. He even said, I, that makes me smart. I, <laughs> Which, even though it probably wasn't him, it was almost certainly a tax attorney, you are probably, you know, the best one money can buy. And, you know, Donald Trump will surely skimp on some things and uh, be a damn fool. But when it comes to protecting his ass like that, that's what he'll do. I mean, that's always been the thing about Donald Trump. They're like, we don't know how good he is at a lot of these dealings. We don't know how indebted he is to Russian oligarchs or Chinese banks or anything else. But we Or the mob like he was early in, even early in the 90s. Right, but we do know that he is very good at kind of even when he loses finding ways to finagle out a win. And that's, you know, that's what tax attorneys are there for. So... It could be that his tax returns just have years of this. And I, I, as I understand what he is, what's already on the public record, um, I'm, I think there was like a year in the late 70s where he didn't pay taxes. There's another year in the uh, the 80s where he didn't. I mean, there there is so much murkiness there and there's stuff that is technically legal, but that doesn't make it any less upsetting to the average, you know, hardworking American. And there, there are issues where I don't think people care as much. Like I hate to say, but, you know, I, I don't think the ordinary American cared that much about torture during the Bush years. I don't think the ordinary American cares that much about these conflict of interest issues on balance. I mean, I, I think obviously there is a strong constituency that does, but I don't really know how much of a, a like a majoritarian passion or interest this is. I wish it was, I mean, but I'm, I'm not going to let wishful thinking override my senses here. And But I think on taxes, I do think people care. And, you know, you know, issue polling isn't always the most reliable thing in the world. But when you see like 75% of 
respondents say that Donald Trump should release or somehow be compelled to release his taxes. I think that does show that there, even among a lot of people who voted for Trump, or at least a, a decent sliver, there are people, people want this information. People pay taxes. Uh, most of us do and in some way or another, either by income or payroll, and they want to know this. And they, it wasn't, it didn't sit right with people when it came out that Mitt Romney had paid this pretty low rate because of how much of his money was accrued, uh, how much of his income was accrued through these capital gains and such. And, and this is another one where almost certainly the legal is appalling, let alone what might be insinuated in these full returns. You know, and there, just logically, there's there's no way that someone who has unproblematic tax returns doesn't put them out. There's just there's no reason to think that if there wasn't something in there that was really upsetting morally or just embarrassing personally, they wouldn't be out. They would have been out ages ago. I mean, Donald Trump is the ultimate bragger. This defies all logic to think that if he didn't have taxes that either showed that he was this really, really wealthy American, this brilliant business owner, this, you know, or just someone who had like the best, most brilliant tax strategist in the world. Yeah, he would have had it out there already. I mean, like the, the, there are there are terrible, odious things almost certainly in there, and his ever shifting rationales show that. I mean, when, when he said during the campaign that you know if Hillary releases her the the text of her Goldman Sachs speeches, he'll put out his returns. But then it was always like, well, wait a minute. I thought you said they were an audit, and you can't put them out. So it seems like this is highly optional, and it seems like they can be very re responsive. <laughs> no, exactly. I, I honestly, after looking at everything, do not even believe that he's under audit. There's nothing that we've seen, and he's provided no evidence that he is actually under audit. And speaking to a tax professional, it would be very easy for him to show the one-page letter that has no private information on it from the IRS stating that you are under audit. And even so, the White House statement prior to this release uh, negates the fact that you can't talk or release these documents as they confirmed them and got ahead of this release uh, by showing them uh, and also showing a, a, a just a basic misunderstanding of how the system works by stating that uh, I have it here uh, in front of me. What does it say? The dishonest media can continue to make this part of their agenda while the, the president will focus on his, which includes tax reform that will benefit all Americans. He's putting in the tax reform ahead now after these taxes come out because of the, the figures that he's paying. Uh, but they also went on to say that this was illegal and desperate for ratings. Where was it? It says, employees, Mr. Trump paid no more than legally required. Oh, yeah, I love that line that he paid no more taxes than legally required because it was his responsibility to do so. <laughs> Right, which is which is fine, and, and you know, I certainly know a couple, you know, libertarians from college, those types who, even the ones who are opposed to Donald Trump, uh, which is fortunately seems to be the majoritarian position among people I associate with. Um, even they, you know, will kind of dismiss this whole issue. Yeah, I don't really care what Donald Trump paid. You're, you you have no you have no obligation to pay more than you can legally whistle right. your way out of. And I just think, look, I think if that's your neighbor, I think if that's your accountant, I think if that's your surgeon, I think if that if, I think if that's most other roles in society or your world, like that's fine, like whatever. That's that. But to be president, there there is supposed to be some expectation that you have outsized patriotism. I mean, and that's the thing. I mean, just Donald Trump has shown us no signs of actual patriotism. I mean, he can talk about these tax returns like they're some red herring, but they're they're a huge issue in and of themselves. But they just speak to the fact that Donald Trump has never once in his life exhibited any real patriotism. I mean, it's all it's all rhetorical. But I mean, where's his actual committed philanthropic work? Where's the work he's put in to you know save parts of the environment? Where I mean, you just go down the down the line. I mean, even rhetorically, it, he'll say America first all the time, and then he'll turn around and suggest that Va Vladimir Putin is, you know, on the same, you know, moral scale as we are. Yeah, it makes it makes no sense. There, there's no reason why these returns should not be out there made available if they would make him look good. Because if you're so successful and you're doing so well and you haven't done anything wrong, it would only behoove you to release your returns and to go, look, there's nothing here. I did really well. 
even if you, I play by all the rules, I paid just as much taxes as was asked of me, on and on and on. To hold them back and to force these uh, releases to the media about stuff only shows that there's something you don't want us to see. And that's another self-imposed wound that they're, they're, the administration is placing on themselves. It's their own fault this is happening. They just shouldn't have to come out before a news report comes out and release stuff, which is this isn't the first time something like this has happened. They get a news media gets a piece of information. And the White House has to scramble and try to come out ahead of it and and try to counter it. That's this. It's only hurting their case, and it makes no sense. And I don't think this is the end of it. I don't think there are just two pages of this tax return. Um, I believe there's more out there, uh, and we might be seeing it come out in the next few weeks. That's. I mean, it makes sense since it's we're dead in the middle of tax time. It would only make sense. 